Well, hello and welcome back. Wonderful to have you with us once again for the latest round of the 2021 Ferrari eSports series. Time continues to fly by very quickly here in the world of the Ferrari Driver Academy. And once again, we are set to welcome our aspiring eSports drivers onto the grid in what will be the third event of our latest Ferrari eSports series championship. Now, this is a category tailor-made to help Ferrari uncover the next big eSport racing talents from around the world. And it's been a long four weeks since we last visited the virtual circuit back at Monza. And well, I'm sure since that checkered flag fell, our eSports drivers have been putting in plenty of preparation for the next stage of this gruelling racing series. But before we have a look at what our eSport hopefuls are all about to encounter this evening, let me take this opportunity to once again welcome you uh, to our broadcast here tonight. Hopefully many of you have been with us right from the very start. If you are new, welcome to this rather exciting adventure ahead um, and the world of Ferrari and Ferrari eSports series. My name is Nikki Shields. I'm a motorsport and eSports presenter. And as always this year, I'm very pleased to say joining me is my colleague Paul Jeffrey sitting patiently behind me, a man who is in no doubt eager to have his say on some of the action that is waiting us all tonight. Thank you very much, Nikki, and hello to everybody at home. Welcome to another edition of the Ferrari eSports series. Super excited to see what our drivers can get up to today at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. Last time out at Monza, everybody kept it fairly clean, and I expect exactly the same again at the home of the British Grand Prix. It's a great track to go racing, it's a great car to go racing in, and it's gonna be fantastic to see how these two groups of drivers get on this evening. Now, speaking of this evening, and speaking of the Ferrari eSports series, let's take a look at what is involved in getting to this stage in the championship, and what our drivers have got to overcome in the weeks and months ahead. 48 drivers qualify for the four-round main Ferrari eSports series beginning on August 31st and ending on the 30th of November, taking in four iconic European racetracks and four beautiful Ferrari models in Assetto Corsa. The drivers will have to score points and the top 24 will go to the final three-round dash on December the 14th. Imola, Barcelona and Mugello will make up these finals with a car yet to be announced and the grand final winner will be crowned very end. Ha! That is certainly a challenging format for our Ferrari eSports series drivers to overcome. And as we've seen many times this series, the competition level is incredibly high in both Group A and Group B. And speaking of which, let's take this opportunity to have a look at the championship standings as we head into this, the third round of the 2021 Ferrari eSports series. In Group A, we have a championship leader of Kamil Pavlovsky with 43 points just ahead of Isaac Price in second position with Italy's Danilo Santoro third on 33 points. After that, there's a little bit of a drop-off down to Adrian Cott in P5. And let's take a look at the all-important 12th position. Bastian Marti currently holds the bubble spot just ahead of Josh Martin P13, with Andrea Ottomani in 14th position. All those drivers are on the bubble for qualification to the championship finale. Heading over to championship series B, Arno Lacob has dominated proceedings. Two wins from two races for a perfect score of 50 points. Maxime Batifoulier is his nearest challenger on 30 points in second position with Michael Tanitsa doing a great job holding the bottom step of the podium in third place. Rolling down into that all-important 12th position, Davide Bolognese is currently the man holding that spot with two points against his name on equal points with Jerika Slavenak and Haroldus Joshuas just behind, trying to find the early important points to get themselves into the top 12 at the end of the year. Well, great stuff there. Thank you very much, Paul. And of course, congratulations to everyone who has taken part in this series so far. And as Paul mentioned there, you know, the level of competition has been just so high, exceptionally high throughout the grid. 
And I think no matter how the season ends for these drivers, everyone is gonna have something to be proud about when that final checkered flag falls. So what cars? are the drivers set to race this evening. I hear you say, well, ladies and gentlemen, be prepared because I want to introduce you to one of the most aggressive and high performing cars in the Ferrari stable. Oh yes, I'm talking about the wonderful, the mighty, the beastly FXXK. Produced from 2015 to 2017, it benefits from an incredible 1,036 brake horsepower, uh, both electric and turbocharged power. I mean, it is a track honed car that goes up to speeds of 350 miles kilometers per hour. Remember where we are. Um, it really is one of the most adventurous cars of recent years from the Italian mark, and it's just such a thrilling driver experience. So anyone that gets anywhere close to this car is very, very lucky. So hopefully they will be pushing the car to its absolute limits today during the race. Now, Silverstone, of course, is just one of those circuits that absolutely oozes history and racing excellence throughout its 3.66 miles of twisting tarmac. And it holds distinctions of hosting the very first Formula One Grand Prix in the UK way back in 1950, despite, of course, numerous changes over the years. The Northamptonshire circuit is an absolute firm favorite of drivers and fans alike. Um, Famous corners that we love talking about, maggots, Beckett's, Chapel, um, and of course it's those high speed requirements for maximum commitment from all the drivers. And I think that's why Silverstone remains one of the premier racing venues anywhere in the world. And actually we've got to say a big thank you to Laser Scan Technology because the virtual version we will be racing on today has been meticulously recreated to the exact levels of accuracy presenting our drivers with as close to the real deal experience as possible in modern eSport racing. So that is really, really exciting. Now, with so many technical corners and such great potential to exploit those opportunities for increased lap time, we thought, why not tap into the extensive knowledge of Ferrari Driver Academy star and double Formula One eSports world champion, Brendan Lee to talk through exactly what it is that a driver needs to do in order to achieve the most from this rather daunting Silverstone lap. Welcome to the Ferrari 101 track tutorial in Silverstone, UK. Hi, I'm Brendan Lee. Welcome to a hot lap of Silverstone in the Ferrari XXK. Let's go for a hot lap. As we approach turn one to turn two, shifting down from fifth to fourth gear, we try to carry as much speed as possible to not ride wide on the exit, and also to prepare the entry for turn three. We break at the beginning of the curb on the left-hand side. Breaking down to second gear, then shifting to first for turn four. Very tight here, very important to get a good exit. At the exit of this corner, the line is really important because we want to do the next corner full throttle. The car is understeering a little bit with the load and G-forces. We need to keep on the right to open up the corner for Brooklands. Short shape here, up to turn six. We break just after the beginning of the curve on the right-hand side, shifting down to second gear. We come out a little wider, carrying a little bit more speed, and we pull third gear on the exit for the second again, up to turn seven. Turn eight is easily full throttle, little kink on the straight. We'll look for the corner, corner sign before cops, turn nine. We break here, shifting from sixth to third gear, then short shifting to fourth on the exit, attacking the inner curb as much as possible, and the same as the exit curb. 
We arrived then through the fastest part of the track, Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel, phenomenal section. We shift down from sixth to fourth for the first one, then they're down another gear into third for the second one. Really important to hug the apexes here. We keep third gear on the exit onto the hangar straight, then obviously up the gears as we accelerate. It's very important here to have a good exit, so watch the line for that. After the straight, we break nearly at the curb sign on the left of the track. We shift down to third gear. Use the curb on the inside, all the curb on the outside. Track usage is really important around Silverstone. For the final chicane, we break on the corner side on the right. We shift down to second gear to have the perfect line in the exit to go for the right-hander and the short straight up to the start-finish line. And that is a lap of Silverstone. Brilliant stuff from Brendan Lee there in the Ferrari 101 tutorial. Thank you very much, Brendan. And if you enjoyed that at home, don't forget, folks, head over to the Ferrari YouTube channel where these 101 tutorials and many other great pieces of content are available. And hopefully... You can watch them and maybe pick up a few tips and tricks to get round the virtual racetrack in the fastest way possible. But before you do that, I would like your attention because now is the moment that we've all come for. Yes, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get to the track and start the racing. 5.9 kilometres. 18 corners. The Silverstone Grand Prix circuit is an incredible place to go virtual motor racing. And joining me for our adventure today, I am delighted to welcome, once again, the one, the only, Mr. Brendan Lee. Yeah, or should I be saying hello, seeing as we're back in my home country, Silverstone, United Kingdom. This is going to be amazing. High speed sections galore. I'm in for this race. Yeah, it's a real brilliant track to go racing. Some of the most famous corners in the world, the Beckett, Beckett's, Maggots and Chapel Complex, of course, potentially being one of those most famous sections, is a real test of the drivers. And the man who came up in trumps in the test is Isaac Price on pole position from Kamal Pavlovsky. Danilo Santoro and Luca Vinole on row two of the grid. Kamal Filipek and Adrian Cott are in P5 and P6. Umberto Principe in seventh. Josh Martin in position eight. And rounding out the top ten is Bastian Marte and Vincent Bayel. Daniele Passade in 11th place. Ruben Garcia, 12th position. Noah Rodriguez and Yuval Chiron, 13 and 14. In 15th, Luca Tavanare and Mirko Pompili in P16. Alfonso Lalorca and Tamir Benzik in 17 and 18. Nico Pantola and Tone Biogrand, 19 and 20th. Angela Colavito and Wojciech Lukasek, 21st and 22nd on the grid. Andrea Ottomane and Gianluca Maggiole, 23 and 24. And Luca Gravino rounding out the grid in 25th position. And Brendan, we have seen so much good racing this season. And this is a track that really invites the drivers to push to the limit, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's actually an intense track for the drivers, but you can see on the grid now for the race. It's gonna be intense, ladies and gentlemen. Do not go anywhere for the next 30 minutes. We have got a fabulous race ahead. The first of two today, of course. And we've got Isaac Price on pole position. Can he retain that pole position for the rundown into the all-important first corner here at Silverstone? The lights have gone green. The race has begun. Isaac Price to the inside. He's got a car around his outside, round the left hand. He's going to be very cautious not to get involved in any kind of contact or skirmishes during this opening section of racing. And there we go. Kamal Pavlovsky jumps up into a race Lee Price down in the third position from pole position. A little bit of jostling going on behind as well. Somebody facing the wrong direction. Rejoins into the middle of the right, but Santoro now trying to find his way past. Just gets muscled out for the run down the Wellington straight. And Isaac Price did not need that, Brendan Lee. 
No, he qualified on pole by half a second and now he's in P2. This is going to be one hell of a race. He's going to have to fight back. He's right on the back of Porowski. This is going to be a stellar. And for us watching at home, this is exactly what we needed to see. These cars are incredibly difficult to keep on the racetrack. It's going to be a lot of concentration required to run at the very limit for these drivers. And Kamal Pavlovsky is our man on a mission from second on the grid to an early race lead. Isaac Price will need to dig deep to unlock all of the lap time that he found during qualification. This is the Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel section of corners that we spoke about at the top of the show. A fantastic segment of race trackers. These beautiful Ferrari FXXK machines come through. There's somebody running a little bit wide further down. That is Principe, I think it was. Or maybe Cot actually in fourth position. Off track, but still keeping it on the running order. In fact, it's Danilo Santoro actually in P3. There we are. There we're looking at Danilo Santoro now. He has gone from the attacker to the defender as Adrian Cott tries to find a way past in fourth. Yeah, Pop 2 is starting to break away right now. If I was poor, I was going to try and break the toe, but as well, you have to accept that Isaac was half a second quicker in qualifying. That is a humongous margin. Isaac Price is going to be revved up and ready to get back in that P1 position. Yeah, strategically as well, Brendan, we need the points. Isaac Price needs the championship points. You need to be in that top 12. We're at the round three of four of this Ferrari Esports Series 2021. So you cannot afford to throw the car off the racetrack at this stage. It's Bastian Marty we're looking at now. Down in seventh position, a solid start for Marty there. Just behind Filipek in the yellow car ahead. That is Josh Martin in the red machine for is not fast enough to do his helpful in these open stages. And just tell us, Brendan, how difficult is it for these drivers when the tyres are cold at the start of the race to try and push forward and defend and attack at the same time? It's going to be quite the challenge, I believe. It's incredibly difficult, and the thing is, these cars are so fast. I don't know if you saw the onboard shot from the last lap. There was in fifth gear pulling 240 kilometers per hour. That is insanely quick. There's so much horsepower in this car right now, and the cold tires sliding through turns like cops as they're heading into right now. It's a true test of the driver's skill and commitment. Absolutely superb stuff. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen at home, these drivers are giving in everything they've got. We see a little bit of a squiggle now coming around the first corner, riding back on board again with former pole sitter, now in second position, Isaac Price coming through the Beckett complex on for the run down the Heinger Strait. This is the opportunity that Isaac Price needs to get the slipstream of the Polish driver ahead of him. Kamal Pawlowski is a little bit too far behind at this moment in time to use the full effect of that slipstream. So Price will continue his charge up the running order. He's in the red number one machine, Danilo Santoro, that earlier off-track excursion, very quickly put to one side, Santoro with lap time to spare at this stage of the motor race, it's closed right back up again to the leading two drivers, so Danilo Santoro, a bit of a dark horse for a good result. Yeah, the top three, as we're seeing the trend, breaking away, you can see fighting for the final corner, super difficult corner here in Silverstone, very deceiving, it seems easily flat, but in the dirty air, cold tyres that we talked about earlier, insanely difficult to keep it on track, let alone make the lap time out of it. Yeah, that's going to be fascinating now. The fight between two now becomes three. Kamal Pawlowski leading that one. Isaac Price in second. Danilo Santoro very, very much on a charge in third position. Dropping a bit further down the running order. This is Bastian Martin that we're looking at in position eight. He has got Josh Martin ahead, so we've not seen it on camera, but Martin has found a way past Bastian Martin for seventh position. Let's have a quick look this replay this is the opening lap coming into the new section at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit in the front of your field you see our race leaders further back we've got somebody running out onto the grey still that'll be a rejoin into the middle of the pack such a dangerous position to find yourself in as a driver you want to make sure that you don't impede anybody else's race when you're coming back onto the racetrack but that was all relatively clean in the hustle and bustle of the opening few moments of this race meanwhile these three, Kamal Pawlowski, Isaac Price, are the current fastest man on the racetrack. Danilo Santoro are moving away at the front of the field. We go back to that fight now. Look at the gap already, Brendan, they're pulling out. That is an incredible pace. 
is crazy. They're fighting the car so much, they're right on the limit of adhesion. This is beautiful driving for them. I'm interested, is he going to be picking up much of a slipstream? It doesn't seem too much like it. As you see, he's actually falling back behind, so maybe he's doing a bit of fuel saving. Fuel saving might come into play on this race. Strategically, it's always important at the top level of racing. No matter what cars you race, strategy with your fuel tyres. There's pit stops not involved in this series, but if there was, it would be an element as well. It is indeed. Look how good that Isaac Price is on the brakes in comparison to Kamil Puflowski. Carrying so much confidence at this stage in the race, at least, that Price really does fancy an opportunity to liberate that race lead away from Kamil Puflowski. Meanwhile, Philippe down in sixth position has equal intentions on that position five of Principe ahead. Philippe in the yellow car all over the rear as we come down through the first and second corner here. The Silverstone Grand Prix circuit is not really an opportunity to this one. Philippe gets a healthy dose of inside kerb as well, and that unsettles the car, doesn't it, Brendan? You can't use the kerb too hard here at Silverstone. Basically, like you can see, it's a big cotton kerb, but also these cars are very aero dependent. Ferrari's done an amazing job making the downforce of these cars. So, in a downforce car, you can't really attack the kerbs so much. You can see the rear wing popping up there underneath braking. But something I interested noticely about Pawalski, Price, and Santoro. Santoro was the fastest car at the top three on the last lap, actually, the fastest car at the whole field. But Pawalski is the fastest car on the straight out of the top three. I wonder if they've gone for different setups relatively, but of course you can control the ride height of the car and that will affect the drag, but also the ability to turn the car as well. And that would be a very smart move from Kamil Pavlovsky indeed. If he's got a car that's fast in a straight line, that will make it incredibly difficult for the other drivers to get a slipstream and alongside. And for Isaac Price, for example, to use the braking efficiency of his car to good effect to get past our current race leader, Kamil Pavlovsky. 22 minutes, 40 seconds of this race left to hang on if he wants to take this victory. Currently looking very good indeed in that blue and black machine the number three car on your screen at this moment in time Kamil Pavlovsky holding on with everything he has got and more and Isaac Price will be no doubt steaming in the cockpit of that car he gave away a dominant pole position on race start and make no mistake he wants that position back regardless of the championship implications but now, like, it's something that's going to be interesting. You see what I was talking about right now. So much faster in the high speed, even with the dirty air of the car in front. But as well, Santoro's right up behind him. So do you attack? Do you defend? You can see everyone's taking a defensive line. He's just caught him right behind. There's actually a bit of a love tap. We don't want any dirty racing here, boys. Keep it clean. You can see, look at the inside. Santoro behind. Santoro needs to get the most beautiful exit onto the straight possible. Right, tapped up right behind. So Santoro, I think, has a chance on Isaac Price. Isaac Price will go from the attacker right to the defender right now. This is gift wrapped for Danilo Santoro. Now he's played the smart game. Kept a working brief of these two as they squabble over the same bit of track position. Danilo Santoro staying out of trouble, watching, learning, studying, understanding where his relative strength and weaknesses are against the rivals in which he is racing. And I've got a feeling now that Danilo Santoro is just holding back a little bit. He's got more speed in that car and is about to unleash it when the timing is right. Right. Meanwhile, Rodriguez and Posade a little bit further down the running order. I've swapped positions to so Rodriguez now in 10th position. Sharon, P11 and Tavanare in that all-important top 12 positions at this moment in time as we see still this fight continuing to rage. Isaac Price has some speed and Danilo Santoro has some more speed. And Kamil Pavlovsky is very much playing the cork in the bottle as we head very rapidly into the first half of this race concluding. Ten minutes gone basically already. This is flying by. Something what I'm noticing from Isaac's car, in the middle of the corner, he has so much more rotation than the other two cars around him. He's clearly done something very clever with the setup as well in the series. You can adjust the setup to make the car more faster or slower or changing to your driving style. But if you watch Isaac in the middle of the corner, especially on the curves, his car is so much complacent compared to his driving style. This is going to be a big advantage for him as the race unfolds. Right then, Brendan, here we go. Isaac Price is now as close as he has ever been in this section of the racetrack. Can he follow Kamil Pavlovsky through the swooping section of corners? Drops back a little bit, but makes it all up on the brakes. Was observed earlier in the race. Goes through a dive to the inside. The door is very firmly closed, but Pavlovsky now runs the car deeper in the corner. Out wide, but gets a great 
great launch off of the turn, so that does not give Isaac Price an opportunity. Daniel Santoro again filling the mirrors of the car ahead, hoping, hoping, hoping that an opportunity comes his way, but Isaac Price still has all the cards in his hand, but that was very close indeed, and that will be a big, big signal of intent for Kamal Pawlowski to know he's not messing about this guy behind me. I am under pressure. Yeah, this is going to be so good. I'm so excited for this. Isaac Price is like a boxer right now, getting his gloves on, and this is going to be a fight right to the 14th round. And this is exactly what we wanted to see as uh, commentators and spectators at home. A real ding-dong battle for the top positions. Isaac Price now coming through the Beckett section. What a glorious section of corners in these cars with these drivers. And he does a very nice job indeed of staying to the rear of Kowal Pawlowski. But look now, look at the Pawlowski machine, the plight of the blue and black car. Just start to move away on corner X. And he's got a great launch out of that section. And that gives him just enough breathing room to stay ahead of the number one machine and Brendan that's surely a conscious decision before we came into this race from Provlosky to get himself a car that is incredibly difficult to match your straight line for sure this shows intelligence from a racer as well that's what you need to be a champion on the days when you're not the fastest driver to still somehow win the race he's clearly practiced his start nailed his start and made a car that he can defend with yeah, fantastic stuff. Now let's have a quick look. Let's look back in again at Philip Egg in sixth position. There we go, sunglasses on. Can't be cooler than that. Sunglasses and a Ferrari shirt and Philip Egg doing good work at this stage in the race. Sixth position, still following my leader for P5. And that is, uh, of course, principally in fifth position. So Philip Egg still very, very much in the hunt for this top five position is the uh, sixth place driver at this moment in time. Three tenths of a second separates him from that desired P5. Now we're still riding back with Isaac Price again. Still cannot find a way past Kamal Pawlowski. Still has Danilo Santoro keeping a watching brief behind. And can you talk to us a little bit, Brendan, about the Silverstone track and the kind of effect that it has on the tyres? This, this is a high deck circuit, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's interesting because the surface has been resurfaced recently as well. The simulator models this. So the surface is actually quite smooth. It's a very high grip, high tech circuit. But because of the high speed nature of it, you put so much load and force through the tyre. And that's what really wears it out. So although the surface is very high tech, very grippy, you have so much high speed corners. And that's what really wears it out. It's a very thermal track as well. And what, by, what I mean by thermal is it has a lot of temperature and that's how it wears down the tyre. Yep, so that is all the things that these drivers need to keep into their, their, their mind, into their skill set, their arsenal, as the race progresses. And of course, Kamal Pawlowski, as our race leader, he has nothing but himself and the track to contend with. Men such as Isaac Price that we're riding on board with now has the dirty air of the car behind. That's unsettling through the corners, but Price now starts to think about the inside. Pawlowski recognises that, goes defensive. That forces Kamal Pawlowski late on the brakes and deep into the corner. Isaac Price to the outside, going through the final turn. This is not the optimum position he needs to be in. A little bit of contact between our two race leaders. Isaac Price just about takes away that race lead. Danilo Santoro uses the opportunity to throw the car down the inside into the opening corner. Price gets out of the way. Danilo Santoro, with all the bravery in the world and a little bit more besides, takes away second position. So Isaac Price, one small intention move on Kamal Pawlowski, takes that position. Danilo Santoro steals in there as well. And Kamal Pawlowski goes from race leader to third position in the blink of an eye. Wow, what amazing race car from Isaac there. He faked the nose to the inside. Santoro, uh, Pawlowski bit the bait, let's say. He went fishing and he's all the way down to P3. Santoro, beautiful driving to make sure he maximizes the situation. Now, the point of interest, can Santoro keep up with the pole sitter of Isaac Price or is Isaac Price going to fly away into the distance? Remember qualifying half a second advantage to everyone else in the field. Is that pace going to be rectified right now or is he going to still be under pressure from Santoro? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. Half a second, it's a lifetime in motorsport. But of course, Price has used his tires more than those around him, trying to find a way past Kamal Pawlowski in the first half of this race. Danilo Santoro that we're looking at now, riding on board in second position. We commented on how he was taking it steady in the early stages of the race, just watching what was unfolding. So has he saved his tires more than his rivals? And will that give him the opportunity to go with Isaac? 
Vincent Price now to unleash some of that lap time. Sontaro is currently our fastest lap holder in this race with 40 minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. Kyle Pavlovsky now disposed into third place. Adrian Cox still holding on to fourth position. Principe in P5 and Carmel Philippe rounding out the top six just ahead of Josh Martin and Bastian Marte with Posada in ninth and Tavanari in tenth position. But that was some really, really intelligent racecraft. And what about the bravery of Danilo Santoro to get that second position as well? Well, he read the situation perfectly in the final corner. There's a bit of contact between the two leaders and he slotted his car the inside, braked as late as possible and made it happen. Stepping down, watching the Delta on the left-hand side at the moment, Isaac Price seems quicker in the high speed. In the high speed middle sector, he pulled two temps out of Santoro, but in the low speed stuff, Santoro pulled another two temps back. So the gap is on his even right now compared to where it was last lap. But this is going to be interesting. If Isaac Price is faster in the high speed section, he's going to be taking more life out of the tyres. This race isn't over just yet. <laughs> ah, fantastic stuff as we look back now into 10th position. This is Luca Tavanari in P10 at this moment in time. Sharon behind could be coming a bit detached from the red number 39 Ferrari that we're looking at now. So some Tavanari has Posada just ahead of him trying to close that gap. It's a bit follow my leader, really. There's a couple of three tenths of a second between each car, not really attacking, not really defending, just trying to close the gap down inch by inch, corner by corner, except acceleration zone by acceleration zone seeing if he can do something about those around him there is Luca Tavanari now look at the concentration on his face fully focused on the job in hand and you've got to be that way haven't you Brendan you've got to give every ounce every percentage of your mental capacity to really do well in these scenarios Completely. It sounds very extreme, but this bit is the truth. The only thing that matters for the next 12 minutes of this person's life, or any racer's or any sports athlete's person's life, is the next remaining laps or however long left in your game, whether it's tennis, racing, doesn't matter what it is, you have to eliminate every distraction in life. If you want to be a champion, even if you want to perform at high level, we see side by side, what a lunge up the inside. New fastest lap for Isaac Price as well, but up into P12, that is a beautiful move. That is, that's Luca Vanoli on Sharon for uh, 11th and 12th position. That is a overtake, I believe, for the Venona. Vanoli, I believe in his cars, exactly the same livery, which does not make our life much easier in the commentary box. But it just goes to show that squabbling is still happening. And this top 12 is very far separated from Bayal in P13. So the top 12 are relatively comfortable in terms of track position from the chasing pack. There is Bayal now in 13th position, uh, a little bit further adrift, but actually starting to close that down now as we get into the braking zone and into the uh, first section complex. And actually, if you look at Vanoli ahead, he seems to be struggling to get the car into the corners, to get the power down. And this is opening the door a little bit for Bayel in P13. The look of four and a half, nearly five seconds in arrears in 14. So he's got a clear track ahead of him on which to charge. And Josh Martin, look, Josh Martin from Scotland having his best race of the season so far, all the way up there in seventh position. Yeah, what a beautiful race, faking the move up the inside into Cops. Where have we seen that one before? But, yeah, Josh Martin has been a stellar driver. He's been around sim racing for a long time. And I've got a lot of respect for him. He's putting a lot of pressure onto the car in front. I reckon down, side by side, actually, into Cops. Uh, to Max is the best. You can see, going wide now, getting the switch back, going wide this next apex. And he's going to get a beautiful exit, setting this move up with perfection. Ah, a little bit wide there, but you can see, get the car straight right into the slip gene. He lost a bit of time in the middle of the corner there, otherwise he would be so much close and it would have been an opportunity down to uh, Stowe Corner. Yeah, a bit of intelligent driving from Josh Martin there. A shake of the head, though he recognises the fact that he got a little bit too greedy at the end of that move when he was trying to line the switch back up for the straight. He was blocked by uh, Camel Filipek, I believe, and is ahead of him. So Martin, though, still has the pace in that car. At this stage in the race, he fancies very firmly fancies his chances of clearing the yellow machine ahead of him, potentially seeing if he can do anything about fifth position further down the road. Josh Martin having a great show so far in seventh position with more still to come, I am sure, as this race progresses into the final 10 minutes. Can you believe it, folks? I hope 20 minutes of your precious, precious time has already been spent in a wonderful motor race and 10 minutes left to go with another race to follow straight after this one. So don't go anywhere. We have 
plenty of racing to go and look at Martin. Look how aggressive he is, Brendan. Tell us a little bit about what's happening behind the wheel now for Josh Martin. We he messed up a bit of an opportunity last lap, so he's trying to get right back up from behind. You can see the car rotating beautifully over the curbs. Clearly, they've set this car up with perfection to be able to absorb these curbs so well. Get the car nice and straight on the exit. You see, floor the power. Let the traction control take over if you so dare. You can see through the fast right hand. And normally, that isn't really a corner, but in these cars so fast, it gets your attention. Let me assure you. Down into the cops corner, down two gears, down into fourth. A little bit wide of his apex, but nice, smooth on the power. You see the tendency of the driving stuff of his car. Get the car rotated, then floor the throttle on the exit. See through Max and Beckett's where they were battling last time. All the curb, all the curb again, eating it up like it's breakfast. Again, all the curb, bit of grass, but this is beautiful driving right up behind him. What a section from Josh Martin. Yeah, really good. The confidence behind the wheel of Martin at this stage in the race is palpable on the screen, and he's trying to use that to his advantage to find a way past Carol Philippe. Fast in the racetrack, but not fast enough at this stage to get himself alongside the yellow machine. I'm sure that will change as the last eight minutes and 30 seconds progress in this opening race for Group A here in the Ferrari Esports Series 2021 at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. And Martin now all over the back of Carol Philippe, giving the yellow machine plenty to think about. Martin using all the racetrack and a little bit more as well in his pursuit of that beautiful livery, Ferrari FXXK, running a little bit deep through the opening section. This is quite a quite a difficult section of corners, Brendan, isn't it? If you make a mistake or you're slightly off of line, it takes a lot to recover it back again. Oh, exactly as well. These cars are so fast, you barely have time to think. When you're driving cars this fast, you react with instinct, not mathematician, let's say. So you have to be living in the moment. A lot of nervous there. Look at Josh Martin taking the car to the limit. But watch down to cops in this lap. I predict they'll be side by side um, there. Oh, there you go, you hear it here first, into Cops Corner, which is coming in a few corners time. Brendan Lee thinks these two drivers will be side by side. Josh Martin would like that very much indeed. Carol Philippe will be doing everything that he knows and a little bit more to prevent that situation from happening. He gets a good run through Woodcott. Now this gives him some breathing space onto the old start finish straight. This is Cops Corner, great run through from Philippe, less so. Josh Martin, a bit of a correction mid-turn. That has compromised his exit speed as we head into the Beckett section of corners. This is Josh Martin. Look, once again, uses all the curve. Very confident, very comfortable over the rumble strip to try and minimise the amount of racetrack that this Ferrari has to travel in order to get the ultimate lap time. Gets a much better run down the hangar straight again as we're coming in a stow. Martin is fast in all the wrong places, Brandon, at this stage of the race. Yeah, I feel a bit bad. I think I might have just commented and cursed him. Yeah. I think that might be my first one of my commentary career that I've just done. Because as soon as I said that he's going to be side by side, he makes a mistake and he loses about a second to the car in front. But anyway, six minutes to go in this race. I reckon he can catch back up. It's all about mentally being okay in this situation, though. And it actually, he's making a few more mistakes. So he just needs to have a small reset, cool down the tyres, because I think the tyres are down to overheat, and get back onto it. Yep, so very easy to uh, overstress the car in race conditions. And then, as you say, by the time everything's calmed itself down and recovered, you've lost precious ground to your rivals. Let's have a look at Garcia now, down in 15th position. That's a look just ahead of him. So Garcia is a man on the charge at this stage in the race. He's closed that gap down to just over half a second between the two of them. The gap is a little bit too far to get alongside at this stage in the race, but Garcia will be looming large in the rear view mirror of the car ahead. And that's what you need to do as a driver, isn't it? You need to signal your intent, let the driver, let your rival know that you are closing them down and you've got the speed at that stage and make them think about you rather than concentrate on their own race. Exactly. As an attacking driver, the main objective is to try and get the car in front to look in the mirror as much as possible. That's why you see people weaving around on the straight and into the braking zone as well to try and distract. That is exactly how Isaac actually made the move on Pawlowski early in the race, remember? Because he sort of moved into the braking zone, got the distraction of Pawlowski, and he went deep as a result. And that's what's actually probably going to win him this race. It is indeed. We've still got five minutes left on the clock, so anything could happen, I'm sure, Isaac Price, even with an almost four-second advantage over Danilo Santoro, is still 
giving everything he has got in that race leading car. Let's ride on board now with Luca Fanole. Almost two cars become one. Sharon in 11th position is very firmly under pressure now. Fanole gets a good run through the Beckett's complex of corners down the Heiger straight. It's one of the longest straights on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. Then decides to go as Fanole to the outside. He's not concerning himself with any kind of slipstream at this stage. To the outside, secures the position. Sharon decides that is one that is better fought another day. And Luca Fanole relatively simply secures the overtake at 11th place with Sharon very deep on the brakes. Did not fancy giving that one up, but there was just no room and anywhere to go. Yeah, I think there was a bit of uh, mates <laughs> racing going on there, wasn't there? They've clearly had a bit of a talk before. But I think this is quite interesting, though, because now he's about two, three seconds behind the car in front. Got a bit of clear air, four minutes to go, about two or three laps. Uh, this, I think he could close down and possibly challenge for the points at this rate. Yeah, he'll be satisfied with that overtaking manoeuvre. Come what may, and Luca Vanoli on the recovery drive now into 11th position as we're looking at him riding on board in that 11th position. I think that is Vanoli, or is that Filipek actually that we're looking at there? So the drivers are still concentrating, still pushing out the Brendan from the beginning of the race right the way through to the chequered flag. This, you can't afford to let up for just a minute here, otherwise, you'll very, very quickly find yourself being swallowed up by the rest of the field. Oh yeah, the concentration you have to have to race at this level, whether you're P18 or P1, the concentration is at the highest level that your body can possibly know. That you fight so hard, the intensity behind the scenes, because as soon as you let one moment of concentration go, boom, you're in the barrier, in the wall, you race over, the championship prospect is going to be struggling as well. So as well, for me, I've had some experience in my sim racing career as well, where I'm thinking, ah, oh, okay, I can maybe back off a little bit here. As soon as you back off, you make a mistake. Absolutely, and I want to talk about the physical aspect for a moment as well, if I can. I see that you've gone through quite an intensive physical training program over the last sort of 12, 18 months, and give everybody at home an idea. They think, oh, it's just people sat behind a wheel and pedals. It is also a very physical sport, e-sport racing as well, isn't it? Oh yeah, for sure, as you see a little move down the inside, quite nice there, but the intensity actually on the body is quite high, because when you're doing this at a professional level, you're driving between six, eight, maybe nine hours a day, five, six days a week. And for me, I have a 90 kg load cell brake pedal. And if you think about that, I'm pressing that 90 kg load cell brake pedal about 1,000 times per day, if not more. So I'm doing 1,000 reps of 90 kg through my ankle. And I'd try going to the gym and doing that for five, six days a week. I reckon you're going to be pretty tired as well for the steering wheel. You're putting so much intensity for your shoulders as well. Effectively, you're holding what must be translated into about a one or two kg weight for six, six hours a day, really, because of the turning forces. As well, you can't forget about the heart rate. This is life and death to these drivers. It's life and death to me as well. This is my job. This is my passion to be the best driver I can be as well. So the intensity that my body feels every day to be the best driver I can possibly be, my heart rates at probably over 100 beats per minute for most of the day. That takes a lot out of you physically. Yeah, it's all about leaving absolutely nothing on the table when in a race cut scenario. And obviously, if you can have 100% fitness and your rival has 97, 98%, that is advantage you in any given race condition. Let's have a look now at Isaac Price. He's a man that doesn't really leave anything left on the table, that runs at 100% at any given time of day. And Brendan Lee, he's got that race lead bike and then just checked out 6.3 seconds ahead of Danilo Santoro. That is a phenomenal performance from this man, Isaac Price, completely dominating proceedings once he recovered that race lead. I'd say phenomenal, I agree with you, but I'm not surprised. I think he was actually a little bit upset with his P3 last time out, and this is really driven him forward. He's clearly done so much preparation behind the scenes, and this is a statement beyond statements isn't it because he's come through and he's just gone right bang half a second quicker in qualifying had a bit of a poor start dropped down to p2 made the overtake and made the overtake stick and now he's pulled away six seconds in a way 
mentally this is probably even better for him that he had to do the overtake. Sure, it's nice to lead the race and win by a minute, but the fact that you overtook your rival on track makes a double up for yourself mentally. Coming into the closing stage of the races now, 6.7 doesn't seem like he's going to be backing off at all. 6.8 seconds now, but what a beautiful drive, and I think every driver on the grid should be taking notes of him right now. Yeah, and absolutely. Dominant performance so far from this man, Isaac Price. And of course, he's kind of a two-string championship, this one. This is the first stage. This is the four-race championship itself. And it's all very important to get the win and to get the points that you need. But he also needs to lay down a marker to his rival for when we get to the grand finale, when the top 12 in the championship standings from this Group A and the top 12 from Group B that we're about to see straight after this race come together for a winner takes all grand finale day so Isaac Price will need to signal his intent specifically to Arnold Lacom who is the man that has dominated group B but we'll talk about Lacom and co in a very short while we're looking now on board with Danilo Sontoro a very accomplished drive from the Italian as well second position heading into the final moments of this race Sontoro was calm when he needed to be was strategic when he needed to be but one man that has just dominated proceedings is Isaac Price your race winner from group A of the Ferrari eSports series at Silverstone. Danilo Sontoro does the job in second position. Kamil Pavlovsky leading the early stages of the race, comes home on the bottom step of the podium. Adrian Cott in position four. Principe runs over the line just ahead of Filipek and Josh Martin in five, six and seven. Bastian Marti in eighth position. Posade in P9. This little battle with Luca Tavanari in the middle. The meat in the sandwich in position 10th ahead of Vinole and Vial in 12th position. Sharon 13th. Lalorca, Garcia, Pompey, Rodriguez and Bensic in 18th. Brendan, Brendan, Brendan. We said it was going to be great. It really was great. Yeah, absolute stellar race. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting anything less. These grid of drivers are at the top level of eSports right now. But I have to say, once again, Isaac Price, what a performance. He showed up to his home race and what a statement. I'm actually so proud of him because I've known him for a long time. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Checked out at the end, 7.4 seconds to the good from Danilo Sontoro. Fantastic performance from all of our 18 finishers here in Group A at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. And now, without breath, we move over to Group B. Maxime Batifullier from Arnaud Lacombe is the front row of the grid. Yoni Catelia and Leonardo Pagano are three and four. Leonardo Dal Carmo in five and Davide Anime in sixth position. Edge Altinel in seventh from Michael Tinitzer in P8. Alessandro Miragalia in ninth. Mattia Dagone in tenth position. Jonathan Riley and Eureka Slobodaik are in eleventh and twelfth. Thirteenth, Dominic Ullman from Horoldas Joshuas in P14. 14th, Murray Stryker, 15th on the grid, and Oscar Barco in 16th. Mattia Grasse is P17, and Lilibov in P18, with Matthias Teskovic, 19th, and Gianluca, Gianluca Calavare in 20th. Francesco Molinaro and Jakob Strabidlo, 21 22. 23 is Gaten Noge and Andrea Forste in 24, and Davide Bolognese rounds out the grid in 25th position. So, ladies and gentlemen at home, if you enjoyed the first race of the day, I will almost certainly guarantee you the second race of the day is going to be just as good. They may be called Group B, but there is nothing B-spec about this grid. It is just the look of the draw as to which group that you qualify to race in. So this is going to be another great race. The lights have gone red. They will about to go out. And the second race of the day in the Ferrari eSports Series is go as you were down into the first corner. Our race leaders trading door handles, trading paint in a T1. Someone running a little bit wide onto the Astro Turf. A couple of cars facing the wrong direction as well. But Maxime Batifullier holds on to the early race lead. Arnold Lacombe, our runaway champion 
championship leader is in second position from Catilia in P3. So Arnold Lecomte does not make the start he needs in the opening sections of this race. He wants that race lead. Two Frenchmen at the top of the field. Leonardo, Leonardo D'Alcamo in fourth position as well. Just a bit further down. Miragalia trying to find a way past. Into sixth position. That is a door that very quickly will close. Miragalia loses the rear and the car bounces off of his rival. But keeps on the straight and narrow. So Miragalia and Adami coming to blows in the opening section. And Brendan, a very frantic first lap. They're ripping the line, aren't they? There's no car. And there's only two cars in the field only separated by more than a second. Everyone else is either seven tenths or lower. What a beautiful exhibition of these drivers though from the start. Keep it all nice and clean and what a beautiful sight. All these Ferraris flying through Mags and Beckett's. What a sight to behold. Yeah, fantastic scenes here at the home of the British Grand Prix, the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit, one of the most historic racetracks in Great Britain, in the Europe, in the world. The scene of the very first Formula One Grand Prix in 1950. And now, all those years later, who would have thought they will be hosting the virtual competition of the 2021 Ferrari Esports Series. Miragalia, sixth position, just ahead of Adam and Michael Tanitza making a solid start up in P8. And all to come, this is a driver, Brendan Lee, that is absolutely well and truly categorically dominated this championship this season. Lacombe has come, seen and conquered with plenty to spare. So make no mistake, Maxime Batafoulier is driving out of his skin to hold on to that race lead. Meanwhile, just interrupt myself a second. Davide Adam trying to go around the outside. Nothing doing there. Tries to cut back as well, but he's got to Nitsa and Alton Elf for company. This is a ding dong battle further down the order. There is Miragalia, goes defensive to the inside. Adam tries to find a way past. Light contact between the two of them. Heavier contact second time around, third time around. Davide Adami doing everything he can to nerf off Miragalia from the racetrack. That gives an opportunity for Tanitza to sneak through in a seventh position. Miragalia just about holds on, and that was naughty, naughty, naughty. Yeah, the stewards, I think, are going to be having a little review of that as a fight still raging on behind, but I think everyone's filtering into line right now, so it should short itself out. But, wow, it shows the hunger of all these drivers to make sure they're the top of the pack, doesn't it? This is intense. Yeah, that was very fast cars going into very slow corners, all wanting to be on the same bit of racetrack at the same time. De Gona that we're riding on board with now in 10th position. He's got Josh Duas behind him for company, but he'll be looking forward, not concentrating on what is happening behind. This is Harold as Josh Duas that we're looking at now. He's 11th position. He fancies himself in that top 10, and more importantly, he needs to clear De Gona ahead so he can buy into the fight further up the field. This is your opening corner at the start of the race a few moments ago somebody running a little bit wide as well but relatively clean through the majority of the drivers there we see one of the cars going to the skate road rejoins nice and safely though everybody's aware of what is happening it gives him racing room so that was relatively undramatic through the opening turns we've made up for that one and then some since then and uh, Harold as Joshua is a man on a charge shows his nose down the inside and he is very hungry Brendan to find a way past this is absolutely intense. You can see right now, even though you're P11, you can see P7 only is about a second and a half up the road. The Comte is the fastest lap of the race as well, so he's closing back in. But right now, what amazing racing. People need to realise when you're at home, when you're this close to the car in front, you can barely see in front of you. And that's the really difficult thing about following cars closely is when you're doing hot laps and qualifying, you can see the whole road, you can see the whole world around you. But when you're tucked up right behind that rear wing, you have to drive up your imagination of where the track is going. And that brings a talent of these drivers, as well the bravery to go into these section of corners like Mags and Beckett's and just trust that the car will stick and trust that the racetrack is in the same place as it was the last lap. Yeah, it's fantastic stuff uh, to see drivers at this level pushing so hard. And of course, it really cannot be underestimated. Every single driver in this field is pushing to their uppermost limit. So when you're racing with them, you're both breaking the latest you could possibly break. And you're separated by mere millimeters as ours now to the outside. That is Slovenak finding his way past. Yurika Slovenak gets past 
into 15 position, Alf drops down into P16, Jonathan Riley fancying his chance as well to get past our uh, our celebrity YouTube racer currently, there we go, there we see a picture in picture, very popular racing YouTuber, decked out in the Halloween colours as well, very cool little setup that we've got there, I'm sure that's uh, not particularly helpful for your view on the side monitor, but that does not seem to be holding a bike at this stage in proceedings, a good solid drive in 16th position, but Jonathan Riley fancies his chances I think as well now as he gets a run coming up the Heinger straight. Let's have a look now, this is Miragalia that we're looking at in ninth position. Altonel going side by side, looks to the outside, looks to the inside, late, 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 as you like on the brakes, puts the car in a position where he cannot really do anything about it. Contact with the sausage curve, contact with Altonel, contact by Dragone as well. And Miragalia will now have a straight panel on that car when the checker flag falls. Yeah, I think he's got a little bit lucky there. Contact into turn one. What amazing racing and amazing dedication and talent to keep the car on the road. You see both cars were sideways at over 250 kilometers per hour. Wow, that was sensational. But I have to say right now, the racing is so fierce. You can see late on the brakes, everyone, and I mean everyone in this pack, is fighting for points and they know the importance of getting the clean air early in this race. Absolutely, and I think as you mentioned a few moments ago as well, in fact I'll interrupt myself for a moment because this is now defensive position from Mirigalia, Joshuas around the outside, that will very quickly run out of racetrack, Joshuas keeps the car to the inside for the right-hander as well now, can who can get the power down smoothest, who can get the cleanest run off the car, it is Harold as Joshuas still holds on to the outside, inside sorry, Mirigalia doing everything he can to stay with him, but coming down into uh, the cops is going to be very difficult to remain in that place and there we go Harold as Joshua takes away that position and ninth place on the racetrack the regalia 10th Murray striker finds a way past just off camera as well for 11th position from Dagone slightly further back we're riding on board now with young Murray striker as we come through the Beckett's complex off corners and as we were saying a few moments ago Brendan the 11th position, 12th position, that's pretty solid. But what is so frustrating for the drivers is they can see 7th, 8th, 9th just up the road. And that's where big points, thank you very much, come your way. So you might want to hold on a 10th and the points that come with it. But I guarantee you'll want that 7th position to make your day all the more solid. And that means these drivers just they cannot back off. They cannot leave anything to chance. They've got to push and they've got to find a way past their rival, don't they? You know what, the difference getting into the grand finale and not getting into the grand finale could be one point. That could be the difference between P11, P10, P9 and P10, let's say. And this is so critical. Their hopes and dreams, you know, of winning this and getting through to the grand finale depend on these small points which seem insignificant at the time, but in the big picture could be life-defining. Absolutely. For our friends over in the UK, we all know what points make points make prizes as we're looking now at Arno Lacombe this is the most pressure that we have seen Arno Lacombe under during the course of this championship he's used to running away from the field at the front of the grid he's used to racing nobody but himself and now he has a fight on his hands Maxime Batifoulier holding on to that race lead not only holding on but by seven tenths of a second so Arno Lacombe will we know he's an incredible driver, so exceptionally fast in pretty much anything he drives. Where's his best chance? What's his best opportunity, Brendan, for finding a way to close that gap and then eventually find an overtake? Yeah, you know, I think he's going to have to do what Isaac did before because I'm watching these cars and they seem to not be producing any drag. So the engineers and designers of this car has done a beautiful job making it not only fast in the corners, but very drag efficient on the straight. The downside of that, though, is if you're car behind, you don't get much slipstream. That is the effect when you're closing in the car in front because they're punching a hole in the air. So I think what he's going to do is fake a maneuver into a braking zone, make the car in front, make him a bit of a mistake, go a bit deep and get a better exit, much like Isaac did. I think this is the only way he can make an efficient pass. 
And the difficulty for Arnold Lecom, of course, is Maxime Batifoulier was not born yesterday. He's a very talented and experienced sim racer in his own right. It will be difficult to find a way past our current race leader, Murray Stryker, a little bit further down the running order in 11th position, but Regalia just ahead to Gone, just behind, and Stryker slowly but surely eking his way up the running order, making efficient overtakes when the opportunity presents itself. But now, as we head into the final 19, 20 minutes of this race, 10 minutes down, 20 minutes left to go. This is now where you need to start laying your claim for those positions, Brendan, isn't it? You can't really do much more with your bike if you want to make big games. You've got to make them, and you've got to make them now. And you can see these drivers on screen know the importance of that. They're so tightly packed together, you couldn't get a bit of paper between them. And you can see the intensity on the face. He knows Striker. He knows how important it is. Late on the brakes. Oh, what amazing car control to avoid it. Most lesser drivers would have slammed into the back of the car in front and had a steward in cry. He's running a bit deep. The car on the inside there, trying to bit of, get a bit of a better exit. You can see Striker was looking for a bit of a switchback, get a better run on the way down to Cops. But the car behind saw the opportunity, stuck nose up the inside and kind of compromised both of them at the same time. And such is the conundrum for these drivers when they're so close to pack racing as this, you can very, very quickly become a defensive driver if you do not affect the overtake. First time of asking, and that is what has affected Murray Stryker now. He was all over the rear of Mirigali, and now he has got this man, Dagone, in 12th position. There we see Murray Stryker just ahead of us on the screen. There is Mirigalia just ahead of him, exiting onto the Hanger straight. So Dagone fancies his chances of making not one, but two overtaking manoeuvres at the same time. You just see the top of the screen, Mirigalia goes defensive. That is Harold as Joshua's as well at the very, very front of the queue. While these three, four are squabbling, that allows Michael Tunitza and Altinella ahead to start to break free a little bit, give themselves some comfort in seventh and eighth position, which is exactly what they need. Tunitza now put in a 1.56.707, so relatively on pace for Altinella 57.1, and this little battle all in the 57s and 58s. And Brendan, that just goes to show, doesn't it, a second, maybe even more than a second difference between someone racing in clear air and someone squabbling over track position. Exactly, because when you're all racing with other cars, you always have to keep an eye on the mirror. You see Lacombe running a bit deep there. Very brave on the brakes, very good car control as well to get it back to the apex. But when you're watching the mirrors, you have to be a bit defensive because you can't afford to run wide. You have to break that one, two meters early. And it sounds quite counterintuitive because every time everyone says, ah, oh, just look forward, look forward. But you can't. When there's so many competitive drivers, you do need to keep an eye on the mirror because if you run wide at one corner, you're dropping from possibly P9 all the way down to P13, that's how closely packed they are. You have to have a bit of caution about you. You do indeed, and when a field is so closely stacked as we're finding in the Ferrari Esports Series 2021, anything other than giving your ultimate lap time will put you in a dangerous position. To go and we're looking at now in 12th position, that is Ullman in P13. So Ullman, Dominic Ullman doing great work in 13th place to close that gap down and start to put to go and it under pressure. Murray Stryker that we spoke about a few short moments ago is in the front, in the middle of this sandwich with Miragali in 10th position. So Dominic Ullman is very quickly winding in the chase, the, uh, the pack ahead. Ullman will very, very quickly become part of this fight. Speaking of becoming part of a fight, Arnold Lecom has decided now is the time to pull the pin. Now is the time to dig as deep as he has dug any stage in this championship and find some answers for Maxime Batafoulier ahead. And he's doing it with some style. Arnold Lecom dominated Group B so far in this championship. He wants a perfect score. He wants another race victory and 25 points against his name. And Lacombe is giving it everything in this number 13 machine. Second position on the racetrack. Maxime Batifolier, our race leader, our pole position man, the man on form here at Silverstone is now becoming the man 
on the defensive. Can Arnold Ocon find a way past armfuls of opposite lock on the outer limits of extreme pushing in that Ferrari? That is our race leader, picture in picture, Arnold Ocon behind the wheel. Maxime Butterfullier in the webcam, as you see, concentrating there. And this has got to be so difficult for Maxime, hasn't it, Brendan? The, he's not won a race this season, and this is probably his best opportunity, well, certainly his best opportunity of the year. Yeah. You can see it in his eyes. He knows the importance of this. Not only to pick up the points, but to make a statement. Hey, guys, I am here. That's what he's doing right now. Yeah, every single one of these drivers are working very hard for this not to be the Arno Lecom show, which it has been up to this stage of the year. And what better way to do that than to take a race victory? Let's have a look now. This is a replay coming down in a Cops Corner, as we've seen in a certain high-level motor race. Cops Corner is not really a good place to go for an overtake, and sadly, that is exactly what happens. Two cars come together, both go sideways. Very sexy little uh, sideways slow-mo as well there, but that is not the fastest way around the racetrack and that is not something that will befall these two I am absolutely sure if there's going to be an overtake it will be a good one we've reached halfway point in this race and now Arnold Cobb needs to find some sort of opportunity he needs to find something that he couldn't find in the first 15 minutes if he wants to take away that race victory as well now we're looking at Murray Stryker very much on the attack so Stryker looking like a man on the move Exactly, this is going to be exactly because he's outside the top 10 as well and he's looking down the barrel of a points finish, so he knows the importance of this. There's 14 minutes, well 13 minutes, let's call it 14 minutes realistically, left on the clock. He's got nothing to lose being P11, so I reckon in the final five minutes of this race you see the car in front going very, very wide. A bit of a mistake there, he needs to be a bit closer to capitalise on it, you see getting really deep on the mirror what he's trying to do there and he's making mistakes there everyone's making mistakes the tires are going off the cliff so to speak but you can see when he's moving a bit to the inside under the braking zone he's trying to fill the mirror of the car in front and like i talked about earlier on the show you're just trying to distract people you see he'll do it here he'll duck out a little bit earlier actually he's run a bit wide but you can see nice and close behind him but this is all about distracting and capitalizing on the mistakes of the car in front yeah, it very much looks like, doesn't it, the Murray Striker is the more comfortable of these two drivers at this moment in time. And Brendan, when you see your rival ahead making mistakes running deep, how difficult is it for you to maintain the optimum line and not just follow them straight into that mistake? We talked about earlier, when you're so close to the park behind the car in front, you can't see the racetrack in front of you. The only thing you can see is the rear wing of the car in front of you. So you're trusting that the car in front brakes at the perfect point. If the car in front turns in a bit too early or a bit too late, or brakes a bit too early, brakes too late, you're effectively following their rhythm. And this is what you see happen so many times in racing, that a car will cruise up behind them maybe one, two seconds a lap faster, but then they get stuck. So often happens in real life racing as well, in the wet races especially, they get stuck because they have to follow the pattern of the car in front. And that's really critical to avoid as a racing driver. Well, so far, great stuff from Alessandro Miraglia, currently in 10th position. I'll pronounce his name right this time. I've been calling him Miraglia, but it's clearly not Miraglia. It's Miraglia, so apologies, Alessandro, for that one. But 10th position, he'll not care what I'm calling him if he finishes in 10th position and scores the points that come with it. And Miraglia, 10th place, Murray Stryker, 11th position, Grassi down in 13th, just ahead of Yuri Slavanak in 13th position. Dagoni now in 14th, so Dagoni's had a bit of a rough time of it over the last few laps and there is Murray Stryker last of the late breakers and then some does well to not hit the bike of Miraglia's Ferrari so Murray Stryker starting to show the first signs of a little bit of pressure Miraglia had a few difficult corners couple of difficult laps that gave heart to Murray Stryker but Stryker not tapping in to that confidence not tapping into that opportunity as well as it could be at this stage in the race this is on board now with Alessandro Baraglia look how he's sliding the car he's needing to use the throttle to steer the car just as much as the steering wheel there is so much horsepower in these beautiful Ferrari FXXK machines built specifically for track day enthusiasts by Ferrari and is that the very peak 
of technology when it was released back in the day and it's such an incredible car such an incredible driving experience not many of these were built in the real world and it is spectacular it is fantastic to see them all racing in virtual form here at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit and that's something to it's, it's worth mentioning Brendan actually they've had different cars every time they've raced in this championship and it's so impressive to see the same names at the front of the field despite very different experiences with each car on each track. It's important as a racing driver to understand your driving style. Do you like understeer? Do you like oversteer? Personally, I like a bit of understeer. And you have to tune the setup and your driving style to each car. And like you say, it shows the class of the field, really, doesn't it? That they're able to jump car to car. And relatively, it's always been the same names at the top. And there's always been a stent that every driver knows what they're doing to set up the car. Yeah, really, really great work. And of course, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen at home, if you're new to the Ferrari eSports series, first and foremost, a massively warm welcome to you all. What these drivers are trying to achieve during the course of this four round championship is a top 12 championship finish. Should they get that top 12 championship finish, they will go through to the grand finale. Group A top 12, Group B top 12, one field, racing for the ultimate prize of an opportunity to be part of the Ferrari Driver Academy and one man who is very firmly in the Ferrari Driver Academy family is this man alongside with Brendan Lee. Just tell us a little bit about how, what it means to be a part of Ferrari Driver Academy in real terms and in emotional terms as well. What it means, it means more than the t-shirt that you wear. It means that you walk around Maranello. I'm based, I'm living in Maranello right now with the Ferrari Driver Academy. And when you walk around and you feel the pride of the shirt, of the horse as well, and of the brand, there's multiple roundabouts and mul multiple statues about the horse and there's multiple quotes about Enzo Ferrari and Ferrari the brand as well placed around Maranello as well anywhere that you go in Italy as well as the world but especially Italy if you're a Ferrari driver you're well known here and it's so so special okay it's special to represent a racing brand but Ferrari it's Ferrari, it's the red car, it's Enzo Ferrari famously said, when you're a child, you don't draw a blue car, you don't draw a green car, you draw the red car, and that's what it means. It's a childhood dream coming true. Fantastic stuff, and that is exactly what each and every one of these drivers in this field are racing for today, to become part of that legend, become part of that lore, the brand, the Ferrari brand, the Ferrari Driver Academy eSport team representing the Prancing Horse on the world stage in a multitude of different eSport competitions, and that is a unique pressure, that is a unique prize, that's what makes this eSports series so very special and what makes the performance of these drivers all the more incredible. You're not racing for yourself, you're not racing for a cash payout or some hardware or the many other different prizes, very nice prizes might I add, that other eSports series have on offer. This is racing for, by definition, a life-changing opportunity to turn your passion, to turn your hobby into profession, but not just a profession, a profession with arguably the greatest automotive brand in the whole world. And currently, Maxime Battafolier is doing great work in order to achieve that dream in P1. Arnold Lecom dropped as far back as a second a couple of laps ago, but has now closed that down to just three tenths of a second. Murray Stryker continues the charge in 11th position. Miraglia ahead in P10, doing a good job to hold on to that 10th position at this stage in the race. We've got six minutes, 51 seconds left on the clock. This is Group B at the 2021 Ferrari Esports Series. We're racing at the home of the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. And Brendan, once again, so far, so good with these drivers. Some phenomenal performances. But what's your take on our two race leaders? Well, Tom just went two tenths quicker on the previous lap, but watch as well, P3, 10 minutes ago, he was three seconds behind. Now he's 2.3 seconds behind, 2.2 in fact, 2.1 even now. So he's closing at every sector interval going around the lap. So I reckon 
there might just be a chance for a three-way scrap towards the end of this race. There's definitely going to be a two-way scrap, but I think the com. This is going to be interesting. Now we're going to read into the mind of the com. Is he going to send it? Is he going to make a late lunge? Or is he going to conserve P2 and take the points? Yeah, this is a fascinating insight into the uh, into the mental side of an eSport driver. Arnold the com has dominated every race so far this season. But now the pressure is really on. Now it is a fight for race victory. We'll be able to see a new side of him as we see now riding on board with Morley striking. Gets plenty of curve. Thank you very much on the inside. Has to correct the car on corner exit as well. That drops him a few yards further back from Miraglia ahead. And Yuri Slovaknak just behind will be interested in in buying into that fight as well, Eureka Slovenak in the white and red accented machine just at the back of your shot. That's not really held up, Murray Striker, any so Miraglia maybe got three, four tenths of a second's worth of respite, but that has been closed back down again as the fight continues to rage in 10th, 11th, and 12th position. As Brendan rightly mentioned, Catilla in P3 is starting very rapidly indeed to close down that top two of Maxime Batafullier and Arno Lacombe right at the very head of the field. Uh, Leonardo Dalcamo not really doing anything in P4. A big gap in front, a big gap behind. He's just bringing the car home and over the line for another very robust finishing position. Again, we have a quick look on board play this is Murray Strike. we are riding on board we're coming down the Hanger straight into the top of the hill maximum speed for uh, Murray Striker come into the right hand nice and tight on the inside get a good run power down early for the run down into the Vale chicane and we move away from that replay momentarily so we're not quite sure what that was all about but Murray Striker is still in 11th yeah, and I think there's two battles really to watch right now. The battle for points and also the battle for the win. It's going to be so tense. I think the camera crew is going to have a difficult job keeping up, but we're going to have the luxury job of commentating over these amazing battles. Yeah, it makes the job so much but easier and more enjoyable when the racing is as intense as it is here in the Ferrari Esports Series. We had a ding-dong opening race of the day in Group A and then Group B does all of that and a little bit more from beginning to end from green through to checker we have had some fabulous racing and it's not over yet with three minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock Eureka Slavinak 12th position we're riding on board here is Slavinak you can see them concentration once again like all of these Ferrari drivers maximum focus on the task in hand as it goes wide to get tight for a good run and just we see that a lot, Brendan, but let's explain it to our audience if we can. We see drivers going wide in the corner end, wider than you would traditionally do on corner entry to get a run on corner exit. How does that work? What, what, does, what benefit does that give them? Two basic styles of racing lines. Early apex, let's call it uh, fast in, slow out, or slow in, fast out. Depending on the racing car that you have and the tire degradation, also the balance that you have, it will change it. But right now, these cars are monsters you know the horsepower the speed is incredible so you need to be able to put the power down so you go slow in get the car rotated beautifully in the middle and floor the power on the exit that's why you see so many cars take a bit slower on the entry take a bit wider and they see so much importance about the middle of the corner rotation and you see that's really what the top drivers are doing so beautifully with this car is they keep the weight transfer weight transfer is so important in racing to get the grip out of the car they get the weight transfer down at the front for the entry of the corner they rotate the car beautifully in the middle and then they can floor the power on the exit this is Isaac Price advantage in the first race and like I talked about the car was rotating beautifully better than anyone including this race I think Isaac did the best job of his driving style as well as maybe the car setup to get the car working in the optimum window fantastic insights there from Ferrari driver Academy star and former double Formula One esports world champion Brendan Lee thank you kindly but Eureka Slovenak will be throwing all of that learning out the window because now all he needs to concentrate on is the back of Murray Stryker gets a great run into the left hand and not a traditional overtaking position Slovenak has to go uh, nice and tight onto the tarmac that means Murray Stryker goes and says hello to a little bit of grass and as we all know grass does not have the same level of adhesion as tarmac and Murray striker concedes the position courtesy of that minor excursion here in Northamptonshire Murray striker gives up 11th position Eureka Slovenak takes away that place from Murray striker and now it just shows you how things change 
on the flip of a coin. Striker was the man on the move. Striker was the man striking for 10th position. And now he's all the way down in 12th. And he's got Eureka Slovenak between himself and Alessandro Baraglia in 10th position just at the road. Exactly, because Striker actually wasn't really able to make the move. He sort of got stuck behind P10. Whereas now we have Slovenak, and he's a fresh car, a fresh attacker. And like I talked about earlier, about being in the momentum, being in the flow. Let's see. He's got about a lap remaining to make this overtake for points. Let's see if he can do it. <laughs> Last lap battles never end particularly well, but Maxime Batifolie does not need to worry about any of that. Serenely ahead at the front of the field, still seesawing at the steering wheel, trying to find the best line, trying to pick up the speed and the grip as best he can in this beautiful Ferrari FX, FXXK. That's hard to say uh, very, very quickly. Uh, but Maxime Batifolie doing beautiful work pole position took the race lead through the opening corner maintained the race lead under significant pressure from Arnold Ocon the full man of the championship he's now broke away to the tune of 1.1 nearly 1.2 seconds at the front of the field Maxime Batafoulier pulling out all the stops as we're on the final lap he's pole position he's race lead he has got half a lap to go to take his first victory in the Ferrari eSports Series 2021. Arnold Lecom now 1.6 seconds in arrears. Lecom has given this one up for a job in second place, hasn't he? Yeah, well, I don't really think he had a choice but to give it up, to be honest. I think uh, he just didn't have the pace, and I think he's taken the sensible option rather than risking throwing the car off the track and not getting any points. He's taken the car home, but we cannot discredit this performance what an appearance what a race welcome superstar yeah absolutely super while Maxi Matifulde is going through the final corners there's been a little bit of drama with Maurice Stryker Maraglia and Slovenak further down the running order they've been swapping positions and Maurice Stryker is the one that came out on top in position 10th Maraglia in 11th place but let's concentrate now rightfully on our race leader soon to be our race winner through the final time for the final corner this is Maxime Batifoulier is the race winner of the third round of the Ferrari eSports Series 2000 and 21 pole position dominated the race never gave up never looked like he was under any kind of pressure to retire from that race lead and Maxime Butterfullier takes the full points offering for first position Arnold Lecom crosses the line in P2 Catilla in third position Leonardo D'Alcamo in P4 Pagadio in five Adame six Michael Tanitza, solid result in seventh position. Altenel in eighth. Joshuas in ninth. Mori Stryker, after all of those dramas, crosses the line in tenth position, just ahead of Miraglia in eleventh. Eureka Slovenak in twelfth. Grassi P13. Dagone in fourteenth. Dominic Ullman P15. Jonathan Riley in sixteenth. Marco in 17th and Oz rounding out the field in 18th position. Bravo, bravo, Maxime Batafoulier. Brendan Lee, that was sensational. Absolute beautiful drive. He, isn't, he hasn't even got a bead of sweat on him. He looks ready to go and celebrate on the podium and be good for the camera, doesn't he? But look at him. I think he knows he's not showing too much emotion right now in the face. But I think tonight, and especially mentally right now, he knows what he just did and a massive achievement to him. Yeah, fantastic result. And there is again the finishing order of our drivers. 49 seconds cover the top 16, 1 minute and 30 seconds cover the entirety of the field for the drivers that finished this third round of the Ferrari Esports Series 2021. Maxime Batafoulier being the man who takes home the top results. And Brendan Lee, very quickly, your driver of the day from Group B, please, sir. Um, could be, I think, I have to say the winner, to be honest, because he just did the perfect job in executing. Fantastic stuff. And as always, Mr. Brendan Lee, an absolute pleasure to serve with you in the commentary box today for what has been an incredible race. Thank you so much. For once, Silverstone's been sunny and what a beautiful race it was. It is indeed. And now it's time for the prize draw. So let's have a look wins this beautiful Barago FXXK Evo model and our race three prize winner is gonna be Maximus Tazandis. Congratulations to you, our race three prize winner. 
Thank you very much, Brendan Lee. Thank you very much, the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. And congratulations again to our drivers on two exceptional races here at round three of the Ferrari eSports series. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. And before we say goodbye to you all at home, I'm going to hand back to our very own Nicky Shields to tell you all about some exciting things that are upcoming in this incredible eSport championship. Wow, guys, thank you so much. That was indeed an exceptional couple of races. Absolutely loved it. Uh, got the adrenaline going, that's for sure. Um, but sadly, the penultimate rounds of the Ferrari eSports series for this year are now over. Can you believe how fast this series has gone? It's crazy, but so many good stories, so much exciting racing on the virtual racetrack. We'd absolutely love it. Now, Silverstone, of course, is a brilliant place to go racing, whether it be in the real world or the virtual world. But next time in the Ferrari eSports series, we are set to visit another iconic venue. Spa Francochamp takes centre stage for our virtual racing superstars. Plus, we welcome the introduction of the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo. Oh yes, an exclusive car introduced to Assetto Corsa for this competition, um, which is just going to be so exciting. It's going to be one of the most spectacular events of the year so far. So hopefully you've enjoyed all the drama back at home. Don't forget, keep up to date with all the action and what's been going on. Follow us on socials and of course, go to ferrariesports.gg for any information on our website. Thank you once again for tuning in and can't wait to see you soon.